Louisville, and it kind of hurt my heart and put me in a different place. But you know what? I'm always right. with. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but anyway, it's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, regardless of win, loss, and you know all that other stuff. It's just a blessing to be here. So before we get started, I would like to um, share a couple of announcements. All right, we, we always want to make sure we keep you guys in the loop. You know, we've been talking the last few weeks about the app that we're getting ready to roll out. Um, there's been some, I don't want to call it delays, but at the end of the day, it should be rolled out by midweek this week. It was supposed to be rolled out so we can introduce it to you guys today, but on their behalf, it was a couple of delays that took place. So I'm hoping by Wednesday it will be completely finished. We submitted everything we need to submit to them, and now it's on them to complete it, amen? So that'll be great once we get that done. If you can't make it to church, you can always go on to the app. It's free, and you can actually watch the service live from your, from your phone. Uh, where you can look at archive sermons and things like that. So it's a great tool to have as well. Um, this Wednesday, we're going to start having Bible studies here at 6.30. Okay, so we're going to start doing Bible studies here at 6.30. We'll go in for about an hour, um, you know, and preferably we'll get an hour. Sometimes we do Bible studies and they go two, three hours and we get into it. But the objective is for it to be an hour. Okay, so I'll say that. Um, and we're going to start this Wednesday. We'll be faithful to it every Wednesday at that same time. So you guys get that midweek, you need that midweek fill up. This is where we, this is the filling station. Amen. Um, other than that, babe, is there any other, are there any other uh, announcements that you need? No, we do have a website where you can see the archive sermons at now. And then there will be a women's conference in the, okay. at the end of March next year. Yeah, so we'll have a, there's a women's conference March 30th, April 2nd in, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. My wife, has, <laughs> and we're, she's going to be hosting it, and she's going to have other ministers coming in and speaking from basically from up and down the East Coast. So, ladies, if you are interested in going, you can go to our website. It's www.onebodyoutreach.org. And then you click on events, I believe. You click on events, there, there'll be information there. Um, and also, it'll be a registration form there as well. So you can fill it out online and you can print it out however you want to do it. And um, husbands are invited too. Who? The husbands are invited as well. We don't want to leave the husbands at home. Well, yeah, so. we, yeah, we want to come, we can. We can't go to the actual conference, but we right. can leave <laughs> the beach. Yeah, we the beach so. <laughs> so we can leave that up for the men to attend as well. All right? Amen. Okay, so I want to go ahead and, and jump into the Word, and, and the Lord's been dealing with me a lot about faith, as you guys can tell by the, the tone of the worship song we've been using, you know, work your faith, and I lift my hands to believe again, and all these, you know, the Lord's really been dealing with me about faith, and so hopefully today there will be a lot of clarification if you guys are struggling in areas of faith about what to do next, about what God wants you to do in this season. Hopefully today will give you a little motivation to go ahead and move forward in whatever it is that God has laid on your heart to do. Amen? All right, so let's do this. Let's open up uh, to Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. So this is the foundational scripture that I want to start with. Amen. I want to start here, and then we're going to go into a couple of other scriptures to tie it all together. But I want to start here, because this is where I believe that we as Christians, when we're walking our walk, this is where we struggle the most, in this one scripture. Okay, so you guys ready? Y'all there? Amen. So if you don't mind, okay, amen. Praise for, uh, please stand for the reading of, of God's word. Okay, starting in verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make, make your paths straight. In other, other verses that say he'll direct your paths. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so this is where I feel like what I, I know for myself and if I'm the only one that's so be it, I'll, I'll just be the lone, the lone ranger in this. But I struggle with trusting him with all of my heart. You know what I'm saying? Okay, good. So I'm not the only one. Good, good. Because and, and what, I, what I've learned is, and you guys may be seated. I'm sorry. You guys may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. When we grow up, we, we're, you know, we're kids. We go through things. We have experiences. Good ones, bad ones. We have, you know, and those in between. We always have experiences. We see other people experience things, whether it be good or bad. And those experiences, it actually develops in us a level of understanding on how some things work. 
Does that make sense to everybody? Because when you see people do certain things, the result, whether it's good or bad, it gives you an understanding of this is what happens when you do this. And then it, it goes in our own personal lives, it happens in other people's lives, but we learn it and we grow up with it. Okay, so that helps us to shape and develop a certain level of understanding. And God knows that because we start to treat each other according to what we see. And so this is why the very first thing he says here, well, don't lean on your own understanding. Because everything you see may not actually be the way it is. There's truth and there's facts, right? So what he's saying is just not to lean on your own understanding. And so what I've learned in my own personal life, and I'll speak about my life transparently, there are things that I struggle with because when God shows me things that he wants me to do, the very first thing I go to is what if I fail? What if I fail? I don't ever, it's, I have to get to that place. I'm trying to, and I'm really praying to get to that place where the very first thing that I say is, yes, sir, it will be done. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And that's the walk that I want to have. That's the walk I want us all to have. But it's in my nature because I've always seen Failures, and I've seen success. I don't celebrate the successes. I always dwell on the on the failure. Amen. And so, my first instinct when He shows me this is what I want you to do is, what if I fail? And that very thought process sits in the core to a place where it paralyzes me. It paralyzes me to where I'm afraid to move. And so, being that I'm afraid to move, now I'm like, okay, He's saying, trust me with all His heart. Okay. That's, I gotta work on that. To lean out on my own understanding, now now, I'm like, it's gonna be hard to do that. And all my ways acknowledge him. Well, I haven't been saved all my life, and he shall direct my path. Okay, so that means he's gonna do all the work. <laughs> and, okay, so I'm not the only one that had that thought, right? Okay, so I told him, I don't believe, I don't believe, but you know what? He said he's gonna do all the work for me, so all I gotta do is just chill, right? I just, me and my unbelief, I'm just gonna let him just take me there. Y'all following me so far? Okay, so God has really been challenging me in this area. And so I want, I want to just open up some things that he showed me so that hopefully it'll tie everything together for you guys. Wisdom says, don't depend on what you've seen because we have facts and we have truth. Okay, so don't depend on what you see because when we start looking at things from a natural eye and we transition to seeing things in the spiritual eye, the truth of the matter is that old things will pass away. And all things will become new. I can't judge things based on the way I used to see it because I'm now a child of God. I gotta do it the way the Lord says. He says that all things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible. Now, see, if I look at that in my natural eye, I'm like, yeah, right. I bet you I couldn't do this. Or I bet you can't do that. And we start speaking doubt, right? Diminishing the power of God because of our natural eye. Our natural eye is something else. It is something else. And so, the walk that we're in, we have to get to a place where we learn how to let go and let God. Let go and let God. That is the most important thing that we can do as his children, is let go and let God. Until we learn how to do that, we're going to misunderstand what faith truly is. And today we're going to really dig into this thing and hopefully we'll be able to, to clear some things up. Uh, one of the things that I always said, and, and I, I say it's la I laugh at it now because I look back at it and I'm like, wow, how crazy is this? Is when I know God has told me to do something and I'm afraid to do it, y'all know what I always tell people when they say, man, you know you should be doing that, go ahead and do it. I always say this, wait on God. Am I the only one ever said that? I'm waiting on God. Really? What, what, what you waiting for? <laughs> oh, I see some fingers pointing. <laughs> I'm not going to say that, but it's going to be on camera. I'm just saying that. But, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Love, love. But I always say I'm waiting on God. Now, this is the thing. Waiting on God, there's nothing wrong with waiting on God because that means we haven't had direction. So it's okay to wait on God, but then when you get direction, now he's waiting on you. I'm going to let that marinate for a minute. Once he gives you direction... He's waiting on you. You have to now take that first step, or else it's not called a leap of faith. It doesn't require faith to stand still, does it? It doesn't require faith to not go anywhere. I can hide under a bunk and say, I'm by faith, I'm believing that all my enemies are going to die, but I'm going to stay over here and hide. Right? 
I'm believing he's going to do it, but I don't want him to get scared. But if he tells you to do it, and he gives you instruction, he says, go here and do what I tell you to do. And you say, okay, but I'm waiting on God. Well, he just told you what to do. Well, I'm waiting on the opportunity. No, the opportunity is now. See, God is a person that, he's a God that when he gives you instructions, follow him. Follow him. He's not a person that says, all right, listen, I want you to go, but not until you feel comfortable. Now, that, that everybody would love him then, wouldn't they? Everybody will love God and he said, don't go until you feel comfortable. All right? No, when he says go, it's because it's a plan that's already in place and you need to go there so that way that plan can be fulfilled. Amen? Amen. And so when we say that, or well, I'll say I, when I said in the past that I'm waiting on God, it was just me because being afraid to take the first step. That one step will change my life and I was afraid to take that one step. Because I know that when I take that one step, it's a lot of things that's going to break loose. It's a lot of things that's going to be shaken up in my life that I, in my flesh, don't feel like I'm ready for. So I'm afraid to take that first step. But I want to tell you one thing that God says, take the first step, and I'm going to lead you, and I'm going to direct your path, and I'm going to take you where you need to go. Amen? So now let's go into what we talked about with directing our path. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And you guys, y'all can stay seated for this, and I'm going to go ahead and read this. Now, some verses are going to read differently, all right? But this one says, In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Okay? Now, that's, that's my version. There's other versions where they may say, well, he will direct your path. Other versions say he will order your steps. It just depends on which version you're reading from. But let me, let me shed a little light on what, what God showed me about this. Because it is in our human nature, let's just be honest. When he gives us revelation, we start getting all these ideas about what we can do. Don't get what, now he's giving me this, so I can do this, and all these things are going to happen, and I can do that. All these things are going to take place, and then it's going to be a great situation. Right? So we have all these thoughts in our hearts. And God is right there with you, like, yep, yeah, that's right, yep, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. He will reveal to you what he wants you to know. But see, the second part of this says that he will direct your steps. He will direct your steps. See, that's the second part, okay? So now with directing our steps, what does that mean? Yes, chapter 16, verse 9, okay? What does it mean when he says he's going to direct your steps? It does not mean stand still and he's going to push you. He's a gentleman, right? He's not going to force you to do anything. But when he says, I will direct your path, what he is saying is, when you take your first step of faith, I will let you know if you're going in the right direction. I will let you know if you're going in the wrong direction. But you take that first step, and at that point, I can direct your path and tell you where to go. And so it's just like in a GPS. I'll give you an example. You plug in an address in your car. You drive into that address. But guess what? The GPS, the first thing it does is it it'll just pop up and say how far it is away, how long it'll take you to get there, what time you arrive, right? But until you put your foot on the gas pedal, the GPS has nothing to say to you. Have you ever noticed that? If you just sit still at a red light, the GPS has nothing to say, right? It's just quiet because you're not doing nothing. What is it to direct? You just sit still. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Same thing with God. If you're sitting still and you're not moving, there's nothing for him to direct. He has nothing to do. It's not until you turn or until you walk. When you start moving in a quarter mile, take exit 85. GPS can talk to you now because you're moving. Does that make sense? When you start moving and you get close to your destination, it starts talking to you even more. In 800 feet, turn right. In 400 feet, turn right. Turn right. Amen? Because you're moving, but as soon as you come to a red light, what? Silence all over you. So in the, in the spirit, I want us to recognize when he said that he will direct our path, we have to understand that the steps that have to be taken is initiated by us. Faith comes, it starts with us. Revelation comes from him. Faith starts with us. Is everybody with me so far? So we have to take that first step, and then that's when the, the, the Jesus GPS kicks in. <laughs> Amen? 
And so that's what we have to understand. We have to really get this. We have to really understand that he is directing what we do. No, Freddie, don't go that way. Well, I'm, I'm going, but he said, I'm going anyway, so I need to turn around and go this way. He's directing my path. But if I say ground zero and never move, he has nothing to direct. He's waiting on me. I'm waiting on him. I'm growing gray hairs. He's still the same God. He's not getting older. I'm getting older. I'm wasting time. Amen? And so we have to understand what he's saying when he'll direct our path. He's telling us, go ahead. I've already given you the revelation. He's not going to reveal anything to us that we can't handle. Could you imagine God giving you everything up front? The whole kit and caboodle of what he has for you? I could I know I couldn't handle it. It'll, it'll destroy us. We could, because there's no way I can process all the stuff that he has for me. So guess what? Whatever little bit he gives me is because I can handle it. So whatever he reveals that to me, I have the authority to go get it. You have the authority to go get it. Because he's revealed it to you. When he revealed it, it's because he released it. Is that simple enough? He revealed it. That means he released it. That means it's yours to go get it. Go get it. So one thing we have to do is we have to understand that we can't calculate God. We can't calculate it. You know, a lot of times we'll sit back and we'll say, well, I don't want to do it because what if? Remember that, that what if I fail scenario. Or what if he wants me to wait and do this later? I mean, let me just focus on this little piece right here and then I'll deal with the rest of it later. So we're trying to calculate his power in our life. But whatever, like I said, whatever he reveals to us, he's already given us the capacity to handle it. So go get it. Amen? Amen. Hopefully this is blessing somebody because it's, it's definitely speaking to me right now. Amen. Amen. So now let's look at what, what faith looks like. What does faith look like? Because you know, that's a, that is a topic that is very is prevalent in a lot of Christians and believers. You know, we have to understand well, what does faith look like? What does it look like when you do it and so on and so forth? Okay, well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm going to read the first verse. Hebrews chapter 11 in the first verse. So we all there? Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Other versions read it differently. It's the substance of things we hope for evidence of things not seen. To me, I look at there and there's, there's two parts to faith. When I look at the scripture, I, I see two different parts. I see hope and I see evidence. I see hope and I see evidence. Both of these are very important. We got to have both of these um, in order to have a fulfillment of faith. So do you, do you hope that God will move in your life? Or do you have evidence that God has already moved in your life? Can you look back in your past and see where God has brought you from? Amen? So if he brought you from one place, you don't think he'll take you to the next? So there's hope and there's evidence. Do you expect God or do you still hope that God? You gotta have an expectation because if we don't understand the difference between the two, we're gonna miss the power of this message. The power behind an expectation, a healthy expectation. I'm not talking about a cocky, arrogant expectation. I'm talking about, Lord, you've done this for me before. You're not a respect as a person. I've seen your works. I know how mighty you are. I'm going to take this step of faith because you revealed this to me. You've shown me X, Y, Z, and I'm going to walk towards it. And I'm going to believe that you're going to take me there. You're not going to let me. Let me tell you something. God is invested in us. When we said, I do, when we gave our life to Christ, we allowed ourselves to, to be his. We, we now belong to him. So he is invested in us because we are, we have his name on us. His name is on us. So if we're invested in him, y'all think he's going to let us fail? He is not going to let us fail. So we have to keep that in mind. My father will not let me fail. He's not going to let me fail. And so when we look at hope. Hope says, I'm not sure but I still believe it's there. So the first half of hope is still doubt, isn't it? It's hope. And I'm not saying this is condemning. It's not a negative thing, but it's just there. 
Hey man, you gonna make it to work on time? I hope so. I'm, I'm running these yellow lights. I'm kneeling at a stop sign. <laughs> y'all know all the things we do. We try to get to work on time. I'm doing that. So I hope I get your time. I'm not sure, but I want to believe that I will. Now evidence. We're talking about evidence. Evidence doesn't say I hope something is mine. Evidence says I know it's mine. I know it is. I'm sure of what I cannot see. Are we, are we bold enough to be sure about something that's not tangible in our hands yet? Can we believe God to have something that we don't have in our, in our, in our fingertips just yet? Do we have that kind of faith? Now, I'm not talking about the little stuff. I'm talking about the big things. It's easy to believe that I'm going to have a cell phone tomorrow. All I got to do is go to T-Mobile and buy one. I don't have to, you know, fast and pray over a cell phone. Amen? But I'm talking about the big stuff where we're talking about starting a business. Where we're talking about stepping out on ministry. We're talking about there's a lot of people who's walking away from corporate America to pursue ministry full time. Do we have the faith enough to say the Lord is going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory? Do we have that kind of faith to put that to me and say, if he's put it in your heart, now I'm not saying just jump out there and do it. All right, we got to be smart. So you guys are listening. If he didn't tell you to do that, don't, don't be all zealous to do it. Zeal without wisdom is very dangerous. But I'm saying, if you put it in your heart to do something, and it seems like it's out of your reach, to me, that's perfect. If he gave it to me, and it's out of my reach, you know what? All I got to do is take one step, and he's going to direct my path. He's going to get me there. I don't know how he's going to get me there. That's none of my business. My job is to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? That is my job, to walk by faith and not by sight. And the closer I get to him, the more clear I can hear from him and what to do. I don't have to keep taking wrong turns along the way. We're going to make some mistakes here and there, as expected, but the closer I get to him, the more I learn. So I don't, I, I'm careful about saying I made mistakes. I like to use them as learning lessons, as they're learning to me. So I started to learn to hear his voice better. And so... When we start talking about moving with an expectancy, that's a phrase that we like to use. We love to use that when we talk about we're, we're pursuing something that, that is in our heart. I'm moving with an expectancy. Okay, so that means your hope has manifested into evidence. There's something that was doubtful that, yeah, I, I can kind of see it, but it manifested and turned into, oh, this is real. I can actually have this. So now I'm moving with an expectancy. There's no longer doubt. I know it's mine. Amen? Amen. And so God wants us to make sure that we're not, don't be concerned with the perfect walk. The only perfect walker is Jesus. Don't be concerned with walking perfect. Don't be concerned with whether or not I mess up. Don't be concerned with what if I make this investment and it, it goes bad or if I decide to partner with these people and it goes bad. Don't worry about that. If God is telling you to do something, you're going to make some mistakes along the way. But guess what? His grace is sufficient. Because if he calls you to something, he's going to provide for you. So don't worry about what if I lose? What if I fail? See, that's, the, that's the talk of the enemy. The enemy wants you to sit still and not move. The enemy wants you to just wait for God to literally come and grab you by the hand and say, come on, come on, sit right here. All right, y'all come on, bless him. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to wait for God to carry you to your blessing. And God is saying, no, take up your mat and walk. Amen? He's saying, pick up your mat and walk. He wasn't about babying people, was he? He didn't baby you. He was about baby you right here. Get up and go. Get up and go. I'm not about to pick you up. I know you can't walk, but get up. <laughs> Amen? I think he walked in 20 years, but get up. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So he's not going to baby us. So we can sit here if we want to and just say, I'm waiting on God. He's going to wait on God. I'm waiting on God. He's going to sit here and be like, all right, I'm waiting on you. When you're ready, let me know. You get on, not me. Amen? So we have to be willing to take that step. And we don't have to see how it's supposed to work. And that's another thing. You know, like I said, we try to calculate every day. We don't need to see how we're going to get from point A to point B. It's his job to get us there. If he tells us to go and we go, it's his job to make sure we get there. But we got to go because he told us to. So if you say, I don't see how it's supposed to work, so I'm going to be still, it wouldn't be faith if you saw the end result. Would it? 
Would it be faith? It's not faith if you saw the end result. And so, let's not get it confused here. If you have faith, then what you see in front of you will not move. If all the trials, the tribulations, all the hindrances, the, the, the whatever you want to call it, whatever rises up against you, when you look at it in your natural eye, you're going to feel a certain kind of way, but when you have faith, you can see right through it. You'll see to the other side. That's where I'm trying to go. Y'all know how it is when you're trying to see somebody in a crowded room. What do you do when there are all these people in the way? You do this. You keep your eye on that person that you're trying to get eye contact with. You move, you maneuver, you do whatever you got to do so that way you don't lose focus. Amen? And that's what we have to do in the spirit. When God has shown us the end result, there's going to be things that's going to rise up against you. He never said it was a smooth walk. He never promised us a smooth walk. Things are going to rise up. But when those things rise up, I'm here. My eyes is on the promise. My promise is back. That's where my eyes are. I'm moving. I'm maneuvering so I can get to my promise that he, that he has to. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is where we are, guys. I just want to encourage you. Whatever God has put in your heart, whatever he has revealed to you that is yours, go get it. Go get it. He has already shown you. Again, he's not going to reveal something to you that you don't have the capacity to handle. Take that step. And if it's not the right step, conviction will come up and say, no, this is not it. If it is the right step, confirmation will rise up and say, yes, keep going. He's our biggest cheerleader. He's our biggest cheerleader. He's invested in us. He's not going to let us fail. Amen? Amen. So in closing, this is the key. I want you guys to force yourself beyond your opinions. Force yourself beyond what you're used to. Whatever your comfort zone is, I want to force you to go beyond. Step outside of your norm. Step outside of what you feel is the right thing to do because of your comfort zone. Y'all see what I'm saying? I want to stretch you beyond that. I want to stretch you past that level of comfort. Because a lot of times we get that's right. Go beyond what you can see with your natural eye. Start tapping into the spirit because when we go deeper, he reveals himself. If you want to stay on the outskirts, I mean, he's, he's everywhere, but if you, if you want to stay on the outskirts and be safe, I mean, he, he'll see you there, but he's searching for the deep. The deep cries out to what? Meet him in the deep places. Lord, this is water. What about Peter? When he was in the boat, people like to use that example, but it's a great example. Peter was in the boat. The storm was rising up. Now, some people's idea of faith is, I'm going to sit down in this boat and wait for the storm to pass. Jesus, I think I see you over here, but if it's you, man, come on over here with us in this boat. You come over here, man. If it's you, come on over here. Because my faith is saying that you'll come over here if it's you. It's convenient, right? I get to stay in the safe boat. I know it's rocking, but at least I'm in the boat. So if it's you, Jesus, my faith says you'll come with me. Come on, no risk. Absolutely no risk at all whatsoever. But what did Peter say? Is you, if it is, bid me come. He stepped out the boat. And he walked on water, didn't he? He took a step of faith. And then Jesus met him and said, yeah, come on. He took a step of faith and he did something that none of us, if we tried right now, would have. <laughs> I'm just saying, I told him to get wet. <laughs> but he said, then we come. He came, he stepped out of the boat, and here we are. We're sitting here, and imagine you're in a boat, and you watch him walk on water. And Peter's walking. But then what happened? He took his eyes off Jesus. We know the story. He took his eyes off of him. He lost focus. He got scared. He started to sink. Amen? But as long as his eyes on Jesus, he could do something that the regular human could not do. He was doing supernatural things because his eye was on Jesus. We are God's people. Do y'all believe we can do supernatural things? Do y'all believe we can lay hands and people get healed? Amen. I believe that is in our day and time. This day, more than ever, we need to be able to walk with that kind of faith that we can lay hands on people and they be healed. And we can cast demons out. Amen? Amen. If we do like Peter did, miracles will happen. Miracles will happen. I'm not saying they could. They will. 
And that's the faith that Christ wants us to have. That's the faith that God wants us to have. The faith to be able to say, you know what? I'm praising up the believer. Come here. Be healed. Without doubt, without reservation, do we not have enough proof? We talked about evidence, right? Do we not have enough proof that God can do all things? He can do all things. So that's the faith that we need to have. And if we don't have it, there's no condemnation. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying anything about condemning, but what I am saying is that gives us something to strive for. I'm not there yet. I want to get to that place. I want to get to that place. Not for my glory, but for his. I want to get to that place. And so I want to challenge you. Be courageous in the Lord. Be courageous in the Lord. Don't worry about making mistakes about making mistakes. It's going to come a time where I'm going to teach them how to ride a bicycle. But I can't teach them how to ride a bike until they get on it and start pedaling. My, my knowledge on how to ride a bike is pointless until they get on it and start pedaling and I can start coaching them. Nah, don't turn the wheel that way. Don't. You see what I'm saying? Same thing with God. Same thing with us. Until we start walking, there's nothing for him to get away. Amen? Amen. Give God some praise. Thank you all. Thank you all. I want to pray a blessing over everyone, and then we're going to move on and further on into the service. Uh, please bow your head. Bow your head. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the word you have given today. I pray that it touches the hearts of everyone within the sound of my voice and that it does something that draws us closer to you. I pray specifically for courage. Hallelujah. I pray for courage to manifest and to rise up in each and every one of us, Lord, to do what it is you have called us to do. To not focus on the facts, but to focus on the truth and to know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Father God, and that we can do all things through you. Wow. Yes, we can. So I thank you for courage right now. I speak it amongst everyone in the congregation that courage has risen up. And that our walk will no longer be the same. We'll be drawn closer to you. And miracles will take place as a result of it. Hallelujah. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.